the greatest difficulty in the materials exploration was in locating sufficient quantities of suitable soil for the impervious core. Eventually, with the help of aerial photographs, a large deposit of completely weathered decomposed granite was located about three miles from the dam site. All of the soils were sampled in the field throughout the investigation, design and construction stages. In the laboratory, all materials were fully tested to provide information as to particle size and plasticity of soil, to establish the effects of compaction by rollers together with the vital moisture relationship, to determine the strength and consolidation characteristics of the soil. Before commencing work on the dam, the contractor erected accommodation which was to house the construction workers and their families. Two townships were built in this remote part of the Snowy Mountains, Bella Vista and Twins Camp. The first task at the dam site was to divert the river. The contractor began to drive a diversion tunnel through the right abutment, working for the downstream end. After establishing the portal, the tunneling crews excavated the 23 feet wide tunnel, 1,000 feet through the fresh granite rock in the abutment. Before diversion of the river, Excavation had begun on stripping of the upper abutments, starting from the upper parts and working downwards. Most of the overburden was removed by the dozers and scrapers, but in some inaccessible places, pockets of weathered material were washed away with high-pressure jets. After the completion of the diversion tunnel and the intake tower, the Jihai River was diverted through the tunnel. The crest of the spillway is 105 feet in diameter and the tunnel passing through the abutment is 29 feet in diameter and 480 feet long. A model of the spillway was built and tested in the fluid mechanics laboratories in Kuma. Water passing over the model spillway intake falls down to the tunnel and emerging from the outlet is deflected upwards across the Jihai River channel and falls into Middle Creek, dissipating its energy away from the toe of the dam. Other tests on the model revealed a design problem at the intake mouth. Rock fill protection placed under the spillway lip would be eroded under normal operation of the spillway due to vortices being formed in the water flow. Concrete walls were erected beneath the lip. This prevented the formation of the vortices. On the site, the excavation of the spillway tunnel was completed and the reinforcement for the concrete lining was installed. Concrete was placed by using chutes from the top of the spillway. The spillway tunnel was lined throughout to a diameter of 29 feet. Like all the other concrete, the lining was water cured. While the spillway was under construction, placing continued on the embankment.
The vibrating roller was used also to compact the filter material. And in the winter of 1965, concreting work continued on the spillway. With the coming of spring, all that remained to be done was to top out the remaining eight feet of embankment to bring it to a height of 300 feet above the original stream bed. Then in February 1966, the trash racks were brought up and the stop logs were installed in the diversion works. The waters of the Jihai River began to rise behind the dam, augmented by the water discharging from the aqueducts and from the newly completed tunnel from Island Bend on the eastern side of the range. In May 1967, the regulating valve at the foot of the dam was tested under normal operating conditions. Water discharged through this hollow jet valve represents lost power production through Murray 1 and Murray 2 power stations. And so this spectacular sight will rarely be seen in the Jihai Gorge. But it is a reminder of the huge power potential of the water stored behind Jihai Dam, a major component of the southern section of the Snowy Mountain Scheme. 